everybody. Good morning, everybody. As you can see in front of us, we don't have the best weather conditions, but we're going to make the best out of it. Go nice and slow today. Yep. Head over to Moab. We have a six hour drive to Moab. Did you happen to uh, look up the weather in Moab? Is it warm it's right now? Beautiful. Tomorrow's going to be 72. So we just need to get out of these mountains. Right now we're up 7,600 feet. And that's why we're getting this adverse weather condition. Yeah. What but we're going to be next to the interstate. It's the prettiest Walmart I've ever seen. Yeah, we stayed at a <laughs> fancy Walmart last night. It's made of brick and there's trees on the outside. People in there were really nice. <laughs> they were classy. She got some flowers. I did. It was the best day ever. Spending all Look my Look at money. those little bikes. Just waiting for someone to ride them. I rode Lucy yesterday. That's true, downtown Denver. What what'd you think of the new Lucy? Um, the new Lucy was way better than Lucy number one. Lucy number two is a keeper for sure. Driving through Denver last night, people were not really letting me. This is the cutest little mountain around. town. Look at everything's made from logs and brick. Oh, it's so pretty up here. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty beautiful. Hopefully, we don't go too, too farther up in elevation. Hopefully, we level out or go down from here. Yeah. I actually stopped here before. I was on a trip with uh, a couple of my friends. It was Art and Matt, and Art's car was this old clunker, <laughs> and the the hills were so steep here. We were only going about 15 miles per hour with this car floored. <laughs> so we got to this point, and then they advised us to turn around if we could barely make it up to this point. So what did you do? So we turned around back to Denver. Very very beautiful. So if it ever gets to the point to where the uh, the snow starts to stick. I'm definitely 100% pulling over. We have the generator. We have a full tank of gas. Yeah. We can wait till it stops snowing until we see them getting a nice, clear job on the uh, interstate. But being that it's an interstate, I'm sure it's going to be nice and clear. And the temperature, I think, is actually freezing. above freezing here, yeah. isn't it? I think it's like 40 degrees right now. No, it's 23. 23? Oh, wait, that's in Idaho Springs. What is it here? Wait. Yeah, look fine. Where are we? As I said, we're going to take it slow today. Where are we? Catch y'all later. As you can see, this is pretty interesting driving conditions, but I'm going very, very slow. I have 3,000 RPMs going, going just over 35 miles per hour. Um, the good part here is the speed limit for all trucks right now is 35 miles per hour. I saw that on a sign. So with that said, I won't have any trucks like on my butt as I'm taking my time down. They're taking their time as well. I just saw one truck go off to the side. And I think he was putting chains on. And I don't know if you can see it through the note. I'm not looking at the note. Um, the road looks pretty crazy. I don't know if it's steam coming up from the road itself or if it's from, uh, from wind blowing the snow around. At least the sun's coming out. Hopefully that's warming everything up out here. Hooray. I'll just have to be sure to uh, Wash this at the campground. I think when we go to Moab, I'll probably get that brush out that I purchased and uh, brush down Atlas and kind of spray in the wheel wells and everything. So there's one of the runaway trucks. That's if the trucks go out on a truck, they can just go off the side and there's gravel underneath there. 
and it'll actually slow down the truck. That's crazy. There's only been one time in my life where I've actually seen, I didn't see it happen, but it was actually on this road on one of the Vegas trips. I actually saw a truck up there. Really? Oh my god. Yeah, gosh. the doors open and everything, like the guy already left. Like they, I don't know how they probably just come in and tow, tow him out or whatever, but. Don't be fooled. Four, four more, more miles. miles. Wait, that's really funny that it says that. Don't be fooled. Well, it starts to level out. Yeah. Like this, this looks like I can just hit it, go to drive and just hit it down, but I'm not going to. It's funny how it says that. We're actually cruising at 40 miles per hour now. We're flying. Snow plows turning ahead. We're at 3,100 RPM. What do you think of the mountains, G? I think they're beautiful. This is my favorite part of the whole drive. The whole drive thus far? Yeah. It is beautiful, especially with the I snow up in the, the trees. Mountains. See if we can get you a better view on the note. Now that I've caught up to this truck, I'm not I'm obviously not gonna pass him, I'm just gonna match his speed. He's going below 35, I think. Which He's is, going real slow. Which is completely fine with me. But the thing is, you got to realize with these guys, is he is probably completely full. Like his his trailer yeah. is probably full of goods, and he's probably close to the maximum. So it's yeah. a lot easier for him to lose control than us. That makes like sense. if he starts getting too fast going down this road, and he hits the brakes too much, it'll overheat the brakes, and the brakes are pretty much worthless. And that's when he has to take that. Oh, that's that what exit. happens. So that's why he's being very careful. And those on the channel that watch this that have been truckers, you might like you might be able to correct me on that, but I believe that's what's going on with the guy in front of us. Man, this is a great view though. It's amazing. Trucks are dying all over the place. Tow trucks right there. There's a Goodness. truck broke down back there. You are not down yet. One more mile, a steep grade to go. We've gone down about six miles now on the road with five miles, and we're down to 9,500 feet. So we dropped, you know, probably about a thousand foot in six miles, five miles. We just shifted it back to drive. Lots of salt and sand on this road. Just instantly coming up and getting the windshield. Almost down to 9,000 feet now. Wow. Look at all those mountains are coming back there because it's snowing. Yeah. You can like see it. Let's see. One thing it always, I always find funny now that I'm up in a class A, you're always face to face with truckers and how many of them are looking at you as you pass by. Yeah, why do they look at us like that? I don't know. Another thing that stinks about the salt. Oh, uh, we just gave Atlas a bath. Yeah, that, and also the uh, the rear view mirrors or the the cameras. Oh. They yeah. just get all gunked up, and it's hard to see. Yeah. Not gunked to watch up. All those. I hate that word. Gunked up. Gunked up. <laughs> G hates the word gunked. And moist. And moist. Those just sound terrible. A junked up, moisty mess. No, gunked up. Gunked up. Gunked up? Worse than junked up. No. A gunked up, moisty mess. Ew, babe, stop. So as we continue along, the sun is coming out. Hip, hip, hooray! Which is pretty awesome. Looks gorgeous up here, a little bit of snow coming down. Now my fingers are crossed, you can't see me, but they're crossed. That as we continue along there's no more steep climbs and the only other steep grade we have to worry about is the grade back down the valley hopefully we're just in a long valley all through the mountains here yeah currently at 9100 feet
as we're continuing along, you can see the vast difference in landscape that we've went through. It's pretty crazy that we started the day up in the mountains in the snow. Yeah. A bunch of uh, evergreen trees. Nice and wintry mix. And we're getting down to this valley. We're still at 5,200 feet. But now it's more turned into the arid shrubbery. And we've been driving what, Jeep, about two and a half hours? Um, no, like three. About three hours? Ish. Yeah. It's crazy how much of a difference it makes. Yeah, it's crazy. These are the wide open drives that I first fell in love with when I was out here in Colorado taking this trip. Really didn't mind taking the trip over to Vegas at all. Get to go hang out with the friends and take this nice little drive. I think it's about 11 hours from Denver. And I'd to always, Vegas? yeah, and I'd do it in one sitting every time. I'd never stop, so oh I'd gosh. wake up and drive. It's typical for me. Like the longer drives that I took was from Indiana to Denver, and that was 16 hours. And I never stopped one of those either. You never stopped? Nope. I'd wake up. Try to get on the road by about seven in the morning. Just drive. I would have my laptop hooked up, and like one of the drives I remember, I had the the inverter. First time I ever bought an inverter for a vehicle, I was in a car. A little Ford Contour I had as a little travel vehicle. Plug that inverter in with my laptop put the laptop in the back seat and connected the audio to my radio and listened to Fight Club the regular way. Then listened to it again with the director's cut so the director was in the background talking about why he did stuff. <laughs> and then I listened to the actor cut. So it was Brad Pitt, uh, Edward Norton, and so the funny. chick that plays in that. So that's about nine hours of my drive. <laughs> And it's funny because parts through here, like it's been years and years since I drove through here, but looking back at this right here, I remember these spots. I remember these planes like coming down. I remember certain parts of the uh, of the drive through on 70 through those cliffs. I remember all this stuff. Alrighty, everybody. G had to have her Chipotle. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We both love Chipotle. Um, we're in Grand Junction right now. Absolutely, she's sitting her toe. <laughs> she has no idea I'm still recording. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna park here, get some Chipotle. I'm gonna take a break. Uh, it's been a gorgeous drive. I absolutely love this landscape. Uh, we'll catch you all after we get back. Stupid car. <laughs>